happy Monday Uprising. We are just so excited um, to be able to meet like this. And um, Josh and I are home. We are home from our vacation. And um, we had just such a week of relaxation and just um, spending time together as a family. And um, we're just excited to be back um, and just a normal routine. Um, and I just um, tonight want to talk to you guys about the season that we're in. And um, I've really been focusing um, on what God is wanting to teach me in this season. And one thing I've especially learned is that um, God is trying to teach me trust in him and patience in him. And um, that's really been a struggle, I think. And um, now is a time where I was able to um, stop, like get rid of distractions and uh, you know, I don't have anything um, I can do but to trust in him in this situation. And um, I think it's just so amazing that we get to spend this time and to focus on a relationship with our creator who created us, who knows um, everything about us and who um, knew us before we were even born. And I think that's so amazing to be able to have these moments like that. And so um, something I was um, thinking about this week is that in order for God to bring something new into your life, he has to get rid of the old. And um, oftentimes um, we want to direct our own life. And I um, saw this analogy of, of God being our Uber driver. And we just get in the back seat and we think we can just point and tell God where to go and what direction we want him to take us and, and not hear from what he has to say about us. And so it's been so amazing because um, God is not our Uber driver. He wants to speak to us. He wants to have a relationship with you. And ultimately, he wants to talk to you um, and just let you have peace and trust in him. And um, right now, it's been hard because um, before, life, distractions, busyness. Um, I'm super busy normally. And, and it was hard for me to just stop and pause and to listen to God. And now's a time where it, we're kind of forced to do that. And I think it's such an amazing season for us to do that. And, um, you know, our faith can really grow in this time. And faith only grows when we're unfamiliar or we're uncomfortable. And um, fear, um, right now, fear has been such like a word that we're using. Um, a lot of you are fearful of, um, are you gonna graduate? Will you have a graduation ceremony? Will you have prom? fearful of the school year um, and all those unfamiliar things that are happening right now. But let me tell you that unfamiliar and um, fear and um, just uncomfortable is where your faith gets exercised. And when your faith gets exercised, it's when you become stronger in him. And this is a new season. God has to get away of the old to bring a new season into your life. And this is your new season. And this is what he's trying to teach you is that in fear, it gives us the opportunity to exercise our faith and to trust him more. And, um, you know, fear, um, you know, fear to our spirit is like weights to our muscles. We have to exercise it in order to grow and strengthen. And um, I read a verse, Romans 8, verse 28. It says, and we know that in all things, God works together for the good, for those according called according to his purpose. And I've heard that verse thousands of times before and I think, mm, cool, yep, God, you work all things out according to your purpose. But we missed a point. It says that God has to be involved in all things in order to work out for his purpose. And so are we relying on our own strength or are we allowing God to strengthen us so that in all things it can work out to, according to his purpose and it just i really focused on that verse and just thought to myself am i am i trying to use my own strength in this time um am i causing distractions or fear to overset that and and really is god working in my life for all things according to his purpose and so um it really got me to thinking and um another story i was reading this week was in joshua 3 and and this time Joshua and was set out with all the Israelites to set across the Jordan River. And in the text, in the beginning of their journey, um, was into the promised land. And Joshua had to direct thousands of people to this, um, to the river. And I just kept thinking like, oh my gosh, one guy with thousands of people he's trying to direct. And we um, 
I chuckled what came to my mind was that we tried to direct a hundred of you on a bus to CYC to get home and it takes us two hours. Could you imagine one man trying to direct thousands of people? And that, how is that possible? We've tried and a hundred to get on a bus to go home and it's like, who are we missing? Where are they at? Um, and so I thought that was just such a cool little like um, picture of what it would be like for one person to direct thousands of men and, and to say like, hey, this is the promise of God and, and this is where we're going and this is where we're headed. And um, verse one says, early in the morning, Joshua and the Israelites set out and went to the Jordan where they camped before crossing. Like they set out, they didn't cross yet. They camped, they stopped. They stopped because they had to wait to hear from what God is directing them and instructing them to do. And then in verse three, it says, giving orders from the people. When you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, your God and the Levitical priest carrying it, you are to move out from your positions and follow it. They stopped for three days and waited and waited for God's instructions on when to cross. Sometimes we need to just stop and listen to instructions from God. It's not about where he takes you. It's about what he's teaching you. God gives you a moment to stop. And this is the time that he is trying to tell you to just stop. Pause. It's just hard because we think we're the only one in this. But I want you to remember that you're not the only one going through this. Some of us, this is just an awesome break. <laughs> this has been so nice to just not go anywhere. Um, stay home. You don't have to talk to anyone. How amazing is that? Um, some of us, it just feels like it's the ending. What next? Now what? Everything I've looked forward to just feels like it's ending. But God's trying to show you something. And in the stopping and in the pausing, pausing of life, he's trying to show you something. And um, something that hasn't stopped us is being thankful. Being thankful for what God has given us already. And um, I have a random hand. <laughs> Sometimes God thinks, you know, we, we have to stop and he's given us all these blessings and he's given us all these things that we can be so thankful for, but we forget. We forget because we are so focused on what we don't have that we haven't stopped and focused on what we do have and what we're so thankful for. And um, what are your blessings? Well, you're breathing. Thank you, Jesus. You're breathing. You woke up this morning. You're breathing. Thank you, God. We can say we're stuck. We're stuck in this unknown. We're stuck in um, our houses, <laughs> obviously. Um, we're stuck with our families. We're stuck with our parents. You're just stopped. Just like Joshua and the Israelites did, they had to stop and wait for God to respond. And the new beginning that they were about to head out, they had to leave the old behind to set out for the new, and they were waiting for God's promises. And for them, they just waited. We are praying for more faith in this season, um, but we're feeding our fear. God says, stop, put it down. God, give me peace in this situation, but we won't put our phones down. We won't stop looking at social media. We won't stop feeding ourselves with that fear. But all you have to do is stop. You have all you need to get through this. And he's right there waiting. God already knew that this was going to happen. He's already been there. He knows our tomorrow. We talked about this last week. Um, Josh and I talked um, last Monday. And if you haven't listened to it, I please go back and listen. Um, they're all really connecting together. And I think that's such an amazing thing. And, and God's speaking on Josh and I's heart and what we have. Um, to speak to you through this. And so um, last week we talked about two things. Um, number one is connecting with God. And number two is connecting with each other. And um, I just think like the connecting with each other has just been so um, relevant in my life of like, who am I connecting with? Who am I, um, you know, being there for? Um, who am I encouraging? And um, we don't need a church building for that. 
we don't need Boys and Girls Club for that because we are the church. And in order to be the church, the church are his people and his people are us. And for us, we, um, we need to, we need to stop and, and tell God, like, speak to me, ask him, speak to me. I want to listen. I want you to teach me. And, um, verse two, um, Joshua three, we're going back verse two, after three days, God was giving instructions after that. And in verse four, then you will know which way to go since you've never been this way before. I don't want you to miss it. Um, not verse four, Joshua three, verse four. Then you will know which way to go since you have never been this way before. Hmm. That sounds interesting because that is exactly where we are right now. We've never been this way before. None of us have experienced this. And he's telling them to just stop. I'm going to give you instructions and then you will know which way to go. God says, I'm going to lead you and your faith in all unfamiliar situations and places. He says he will lead you, but you have to stop and pause like Joshua and the Israelites did. They camped out for three days waiting for God to give them instructions. He said, not until then you can go because you've never been this before, but God has. He's been there in your situation. He's been in your unfamiliar situations. God already knows your tomorrow. He's working it out. He's been working it out and he's been there. And so a lot of our, a lot of us are just literally wasting today's strength over tomorrow's battles. God's not surprised. We may have never experienced this situation before, but I promise you that God knows your faith does not exempt you from the storm that you're in. And we're going to get through this. Um, a lot of us, it's the same storm, but we're all in different boats. And depending on where you are and what you feel like is um, your boat right now, we're all in the same storm and we're all going to get through this together. But there is one question that just keeps coming into my mind of like, okay, God, why? We will get through this. But the question is, will we all be better once we get through it? It's about your response response and your reaction and I will be better and you will be better and your relationship with God will be stronger than ever your faith will grow through this um but you have to stop you have to pause and you have to allow God to speak to you and give you instructions take away all the distractions take away fear God's telling you put your phone down stop what is the distractions in your mind that's causing your faith not to grow? We all want um, the six pack abs. You know, we all want to have, you know, um, great arm muscle and, you know, but we don't want to put the work in to get them. We want a testimony, but we're not willing to go through a test. And God is in the ministry of miracles. And right now, is a time for that. And, and I just don't want you guys to lose sight that you might be young or, um, you know, God can't work through me. I'm 13. I'm 16. Like I can't do that. God can do that. And he's positioned you for a time in a place such as this for a miracle. And you may be someone's miracle and someone else's mess. And he's positioned you right now in a time for you to be someone's miracle. And that is so important for you guys to, um, this is your ministry. This is how you grow. And God's called us to be fishers of men. And, and how are you connecting with each other? And how are you pulling people into him and to know him and to build his kingdom? And um, I want to give you guys just four just things to think about and to talk about in your small group time. Um, maybe tonight or later this week when, when you guys do um, have that planned. And the four things is number one, draw near. Draw near, draw near to God, listen to him. And number two is stop, put down the distractions, pause, 
listen to his voice. What is he speaking to you? What is he teaching you in this season? How is he growing your faith? Number three is wait for God to speak. He's in the business of relationships and he's wanting to speak to you in this time. And what is he saying to you? And number four, be a miracle in someone else's life. How are you being a miracle in someone else's life? Because we will get through this, but the question is, will we be better once we get through this? Be a miracle to someone else. A reaching hand, um, smiling, a text message to encourage someone. Um, maybe someone you would never even reach out to. Shoot them a text. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Right now is such a time for you guys to just to really put into practice what it means to be fishers of men and to grow God's kingdom. And Josh and I are just so excited to have like a group of students who love Jesus, love his church and love people. And um, right now is such a time where we can practice that. And um, you know, our leaders, um, our pastors, we are all praying for you and we wanna guide you through the season and whatever that may look like. And um, I wanna pray over tonight and just pray for you guys and pray over the people that you can be a miracle to. Um, and just know that um, you are positioned for a miracle right now. God just needs you to draw near and to stop and be close. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you um, for this group. Thank you for the uprising, Lord. We thank you for New Life Chapel. We thank you for our pastors and our leaders, Lord. We just um, pray for just um, wisdom and courage and strength, Lord. We pray that um, we are positioned right now for a miracle, Lord, and that we want to be fishers of men, Lord, to bring more people to know you, to love you, and to serve you, God. We are just so thankful for all the many blessings you have put upon us, Lord. Lord God, we just pray right now, hedge of protection and safety and health, Lord, around our families and around our church and just the people that we um, have close to us, Lord. I pray, I pray for the people um, that don't know you, Lord, that this would be a season for them to um, reach out and to just know you and to feel your presence, Lord God. We just thank you so much for what you've given us. We thank you for this technology to be able to meet with our students, Lord. And I just pray right now, um, just for each student represented, the ones that maybe just haven't listened in, and Lord, that you would just guide them and that their faith would grow stronger through this um, season, Lord, that you would take all the fear and the doubt and the frustration and the anxieties away from them, Lord, that we know that in all things work together for your purpose and, and according to your will, and we just um, thank you for the promises you've given us, Lord. We just lift you, um, everyone up, Lord. We thank you and we praise you and we give you all the glory, honor. In your name we pray, amen. Hey guys, we um, we want you to be able to connect with Josh and I um, and any of the other leaders. Um, we have an email, it's students at newlifechapel.net. It'll be at the bottom of this screen students at newlifechapel.net. And if you email us um, prayer requests, needs, um, just maybe you just need someone to talk to, email us. We would love to connect with you and stay connected with you. Um, We're gonna be doing some live YouTube videos like we did last night and we just want you guys to get on and just hang out with us. Um, if there's questions you need us to answer, we'd love to be there for you. Um, also, your small group leader will be reaching out. Please, please respond and set up times to meet with them. That's what they're here for. And um, we've been preparing for this and just um, we're excited to just share and spend time with you guys. If you do not have a small group leader or you have not been contacted by a small group leader, email again, students at newlifechapel.net and we will get you assigned to a leader. Um, we also just want you guys to know, and Josh and I love you guys, and we're praying for you. Like we said, um, we're in this together, and um, we just can't wait until we get to spend some more time with you guys and play basketball and volleyball and be able to worship with you, and we are just so blessed by this technology. Um, and we love you guys, and have just an amazing week. See ya.